Okay, this is my Grizzly GO755 mill drill. It's new to me. When I bought it, it did not have the DRO on it. And, um, well, I'm a new school picky kid. I uh, don't like counting turns and trying to remember to keep backlash in mind and stuff like that. So, spent about uh, 700 bucks on Amazon, got this kit. Pretty nice. Uh, this was actually one of the first projects I ever did with it. First project I did with my own mill. I'm going to show you quickly how I installed the scales. These are magnetic scales. Uh, this is the y-axis. I just made an aluminum block and uh, I actually attached it here. Most guys I see put them up here. I didn't want to get that close to that screw in case I need to take any uh, play out of the ways. Uh, that's just a quarter 20 bolt, about three and a half inches long. Pretty solid. Tracks good. Did uh, spend a little bit of time making sure that uh, that moved parallel all the way down. And this scale was angled correctly so it didn't move whenever. Anyway, I'm going to go on that too much. If you got one of these, you probably already know how to use a mill. X axis, pretty easy. Piece of angle iron here. I did give up on this oil port. If I really want to put an oil port back in this thing, what I'll do is put it right here. It's uh, still going to hit that little strainer basket. And these two bolts here and on the opposite side were existing. And uh, they are M8 standard thread. I'm an old Subaru guy, so I had a lot of metric bolts laying around. And this is just a piece of aluminum that I very recklessly cut to length and uh, then mounted uh, the sensor right there. Now, the Z-axis kind of had mixed feelings on whether or not I either wanted to add this just because uh, that's probably the easiest axis to keep track of, but it came with a kit, so I figured I might as well do it. So what I did was took a piece of angle aluminum. This is about two inches across and it's been cut down to uh, the width of the scale just to keep it out of my way. It still is a little tricky to change gears, but it's not terrible. Uh, I guess if I really wanted to make that a little nicer, I could have shoved it over that way a little bit, but I'm lazy. I wanted to be able to get that bolt in there without having to cut that off. Um, Anyway, that worked out pretty well, and I also put the RPM sensor in. The uh, magnet is right there. It's just sitting on the, uh, I don't know if you call it the arbor or the quill, but eventually I'll probably put a piece of heat shrink tubing around this just to keep that from flying off. I have run it at high speed. didn't come off, so I'm going to call that a win. Uh, mounting bracket for that, I just took the depth indicator out and uh, just put a, 3 8 bolt through it and that's another piece of that aluminum angle and uh, that's basically it the uh, DRO itself is bolted right to the top of the mill and it's kind of a wire mess right now plan to clean that up soon enough I do have to say I love this DRO one reason that I uh, picked it was one of the first projects I have to do is make a hub for a uh, flywheel and this actually has a function for cutting bolt circles. So you can uh, set the diameter of your bolt circle, the number of holes, and uh, it will basically take you through and let you cut all those holes. I've got this set up for six holes on a six inch circle. So I don't wanna move this too far right now. I've still got my uh, center finder in it, but basically, your red circle is where you are. The orange circle is where you want to be. So pretty much just follow the bouncing ball. We would just move the red circle over until the X and Y line up. And I'm just manually moving this. Mm, kind of overshot it a little bit there. That's close enough for any reasonable person. So then when that one's done, uh, you just hit one of the arrows and go to the next one. Whichever way you want to go, you can. And again, you just move your red circle. 
In this case, we're going to line the X up first. Do the Y. Same thing. Just crank that. And there you go. And you would repeat that process until you had all six circles cut. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because I've got my uh, wiggler in here right now, but that's where we started out. And uh, we went over and cut this imaginary hole, and now we're on top of this one. So you can see that's, might as well say that's three inches, and it would continue all the way around. Uh, there's a whole bunch of features in this thing that I haven't figured out yet, but uh, it does some cool stuff. Worth checking it out. Anyway, that's it. Happy making chips and stuff. Uh, disclaimer, I am not a professional machinist, so don't take anything that I say as gospel. In fact, you probably shouldn't listen to me at all. Talk to somebody that does it for a living.